Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and our guest this week is Randy Thomas. You got questions for her? Throw them in our chat room. We'll be glad to answer them. She'll be glad to answer them. <laughs> Along with Tech Talk a little bit later on, if you got your tech questions, throw them there as well. So, we ready to get rolling here, guys? Let's do this. Do Voice it. over body shot, right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you. I know. It feels like forever, especially when I'm gone for one of the shows on the road. Yeah, I don't see you for like a month. I know. Well, it's true. It's true. Now that we're on this every other week schedule. With I know. but Long uh, gaps of time, so it's good to be back. Yeah, so lots of fun stuff tonight. We have Randy Thomas with us. We'll get her on in just a second. Mm -hmm. And we have Tech Talk a little bit later on. Yes, we do. So if you got tech questions, throw them in the chat room along with questions for Randy, uh, because I'm sure there will be a multitude of things you want to ask her. Yeah, Randy's up first, so we definitely want those questions coming in right away. Yeah. So, you know, I've been working on old radios lately. Yeah. I keep mentioning this. but <laughs> And they keep filling the studio. I know. That we've got quite a pile of them now. But uh, <laughs> I found a real rare one yesterday. And, you know, sometimes you'll reach into a radio, and you shouldn't do this. Sometimes you'll get a, a shock. Yeah. You know, if it's, like, not set up right. Yeah. Well, my... My Apple Watch buzzes a lot. And sometimes someone will call me. And I'm like, oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> so you have your arm in there. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the watch vibrates <laughs> right. at the perfectly wrong time. Yeah. It's like, oh, darn. Well, I just dropped that $10,000 tube. Oh, Let me ask you this about vibrating. Do you have yeah. phantom phantom foam vibrations in your pocket? Oh, yeah. All Isn't the time. that cre creepy? Do you get this? Maybe you don't, because you don't probably keep your phone in your leg pocket. Yeah, no, it's like. You'll feel your legs. It's a fan phantom, phantom phone vibration. Thing. You're like, no, my phone's not in I could have swore I amputated that phone, but uh, <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> well, why don't we introduce our guest because yes. she's so patiently waited for us here. Absolutely. Randy Thomas is one of the top voices in the voiceover world today. You hear her on the Academy Awards and the Tonys and all sorts of stuff, plus a lot of trailer work and promos and commercials. You hear her, you'll go, oh, her. Anyway, let's bring in our guest, Randy Thomas. Everybody. Have a seat. All right. Ducking the mics. It's not getting easy. Getting into position. <laughs> there you go. And doing it all live. I know. Yeah, no I like that. Welcome back. Thank you. I have been here a few times. You've been you on. Did. This is yeah. actually your fourth time on the show. The first one or two were from Florida. Uh, one might have been in Florida, mm -hmm. but I was in Buffalo and George was in Santa Monica. That's right. You hadn't moved here yet. Right. So, mm -hmm. But you've been here twice before. Yeah. In yeah. this studio. Wow. The, the I'm starting to feel like a body. pest now. But so. each time you come, it's real. It's a range Everything's completely changed. different. That's right. yeah, so it's that's a different true. place. Yeah. It's, you know, we want people to like trip over things. You know, it's like, <laughs> that wasn't there before. It's cozy. Yeah. We like it. Yeah. First off, got to tell you, 
I was watching the the, the Tonys this year and mm -hmm. the Academy. You were fabulous this year. I mean, it, it's the glue that ties that show together because the speeches certainly are like, he's going <laughs> on, you know. What what does it take to really make that flow the way it does? What's the process there? You know, I, I have to say, having done the Oscars 10 times and 21 Tonys, there is a, a flow that you get into, and there's a rhythm to the evening. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point, if I haven't figured it out, I should be in a different job uh, criteria. But no, I feel like um, there's a rhythm and a flow, and I just... When I'm there and I'm tapped into what it is we're doing, I'm just present. And I don't really think about it too much more than that, you mm -hmm. know? Like, whatever happens from me happens. Right. Now, are you in the truck or are you in the actual hall or how? Each time it's a different situation. But who's directing and what they want to do? Or... Yes. And, and the venue. So different venues have different situations. The Oscars, I'm in a truck, oh, a cool. gel co in okay. the back. Um Townsend Coleman uses the same gel co I'm in when he comes in the next morning to do live with Kelly and Ryan. The gel co. You're calling that a, so is that the name of the truck, the yeah. brand? What is it? Yeah, I think so. It's just it's called, called a gel co. Gel -co. Yeah, okay. it doesn't have a bathroom in it. It's just yeah, yeah. a room. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's on blocks. The honey wagon <laughs> somewhere else. I guess. Yeah, definitely no honey wagon. <laughs> but it's big enough for me and Tina Canazaro yeah. Debone. She writes all yeah. the winter walk ups and we work it together. So, but at the Tonys, I'm in a dressing room, up in a Rockette dressing room. At the Kennedy Center, I am literally in the carpenter's closet. I was going to say a carpenter or a broom closet yeah, or something. Yeah, it's a carpenter's a closet. closet yeah, yeah. And it's very dusty and very, you know, they come in and they pull the curtain back and they're pulling out nails and hammers. And <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah, you're dressed for the occasion. Um, yeah, on the night of, <laughs> on the night of, but usually, you know, I'm just in rehearsal clothes. I'm, yeah. I'm a jeans kind of girl. Yeah. So you like that you, you have a, a playbook or there's everything script. Is, is script for mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. everything is okay. It's page five. Everything is timed out. Every speech that's written for every presenter, every introduction, every bump to commercial, it's all timed out so that hopefully by the time we're done, if the, the winners actually keep their speeches within a, an allotted time, yeah, which we're pretty much do, guaranteed yeah. to get off the air on time, but most of the time it doesn't happen. It runs a little long sometimes. For the when the show part. runs long, it's because of the speeches mainly, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just... I would, it's certain the bigger the the bigger the role or the bigger the celebrity, the longer the speeches... The less we will cut them. ...permitted to go, yeah. Correct, correct. And somebody has to make that call. Yeah. The director, I guess? They the, the director is making the call and the producer, and yeah. they're always on page, but... You know, sometimes you don't expect a speech to be incredibly poignant and powerful, and you never know when that's okay. going to happen. Right. And they're really listening to see this speech is going somewhere. I'm yeah, not yeah. going to play them off. Gotcha, right. gotcha. Or all of a sudden they'll start to play them off, and just as they were thanking their deceased, what you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> right. oh, it's hard. It's that's hard, awkward. but that's a call that they have to make to just keep the show on I, time. Yeah. I would just love to hear what the director is saying, like, get her off of there. <laughs> I mean, was that ever happening? Or um, I think, yeah, I, you know, people say things, they're just, it's like watching television, you know? Sometimes you're talking to the television, they're talking to the screen in real time. <laughs> what are you hearing in your headset? Well, I like to hear everything. Some announcers everything. only want to hear their cue. So right. they only want to hear the show and then when it's time for them to speak. Right. To me, half the fun is being in on the whole PL and listening right. to everything, so the, the production. So are I'm you hearing, hearing the cameras being called? Camera three, one, mm -hmm. two, that stuff? There are different channels yeah. when they're talking to cameras. I am in the main channel with the director and the AD and anyone else that has to cue me or anyone that has to talk to the director ad they come into that pl um gotcha. yeah okay. and it's uh so but what i ask them to do is to um flip it so i want the show in my left ear and i want my voice and the director in my right okay all right so all right. i want the pl in my right because as soon as they call me i put it behind my ear and i'm only listening to show Oh, I see. So, so you if you like don't a... ask them to split it left and right, yeah. you'll get everything in both sides. All the time. And that's So when you're like focused and reading that me. script, you can't be hearing all that chatter. I can't read yeah, yeah. and listen to people talking. So you just have like a, 
You just have a motion right. you do, and the headset Correct, off, correct. Boom. Because I have the director so loud, because I want to not miss a cue, that once my mic is hot, which I'm putting on myself, I'm afraid they can hear him yelling cues because oh, he wow. was so... And I'm not fumbling for volume controls. I'm just... You just have an I, on. I hit my mic right. on, and once they've cued me, it goes behind my head. So if they're trying to stop me, yeah. I'll never hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> yeah. go. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you didn't do it for a few years. I mean, you said you've, you've done the Oscars mm -hmm. like 10 times, mm -hmm. and then they had some other people doing it. And now Correct. you're doing it again, thank goodness, because you're marvelous at it. Well, uh, thank you. How did you get that gig back? Um, yeah, really. It generally is the producer that decides what their show is going to look like, and they select the voice talent. So every year when you have a different producer coming through, they want to make that choice and put their sound in the show. Um, and for me, when I moved back here in 2016, Glenn Weiss, it would have been, it was then his second year doing the Oscars and second, third. So he just finished his fourth year and he brought me back. The producers were happy with the job that I did. So they brought me back that following year. And then that worked out okay, and so I got brought back this past year for the no host, which was kind of a big deal. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy night, but it was super fun. You called it the no host. The no host. Oscars had no. Oh, host. the no host Oscars. Yeah, Oscars yeah, yeah because, <laughs> because someone because someone. So the Emmys do is not having a host. They're going oh, the same way. So. Trend setting. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a set of trends. Well, but, but you're the perfect person because you know how it all works, and then yeah. you can tie it all together. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm really blessed that I, I get those shows and that I really love to do them. They're just a part of who I am. And I think it's because of, we talk about our radio backgrounds, but I do think it's because I was on the radio that I'm super duper comfortable when they say we're going live right. in three, two, I'm there. Yeah, like we do here. <laughs> That's right. I mean, and doing it live is, you know, it's spontaneous, it's fun, and mm -hmm. that's really what makes it work. And 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 that really comes from radio, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, if something goes wrong, it's like, don't panic. Right. You know, what are they going to do to us? Well, you know? exactly. <laughs> like, people don't know the few things that happen just before we hit air. But I also think that's why VOBS is such a great show, because you guys are live. You're not putting it in the can. You are talking to people. You know you have a, a live audience. And I think it just adds something to your energy. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? I think yeah. so. Well, no, it's important to yeah, me. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, if you're just joining us live. Uh, <laughs> live, live from VOBS. <laughs> yes. Randy Thomas is with us. And uh, if you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room. And I believe Mr. Whitham is monitoring that or somebody Mike, is. Actually, Mike, uh, Hat's brother, Matt, Mike. Is Mike. On. Okay. We got the Wait, entire. Wait, Matt's brother, Mike, is on? Yeah. Mike, he's he's Mike monitoring the chat room. monitoring the chat room. And oh, Matt's doing cool. a show tonight because Thanks, his Mike. mom, Sue, who usually is doing it, is running late. So, but we it have It is a covered. family affair. Yeah. Her sons back her up. It's, a, it's, a big <laughs> way. it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And there, there you go. Is. There he is right there. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room and we'll get to that question just a bit. So you started in radio and there's a, a, mm -hmm. it was over at your studio the other day and seeing the pictures of you in radio and mm -hmm. it's like... Boy, I remember those days. Right. How did you make that transition? Well, how long were you were you doing radio? Where were you doing it? And how did you make that transition to just doing what the rest of us do, which is voiceover? Right. Well, I started in Detroit where I'm, I finished high school, started junior college. Um, great people come out of Detroit, Michigan. But that's where I started in radio. And then I moved to New York. I was on WPLJ in New York. And then I was on KZU in Dallas, and then I went to Florida and was Just on... spinning the tunes. Yeah, Waxy and Zeta 4 and WSHE. And then I came out here in 1986 on KMET. We all got fired in mass to be, <laughs> become the wave. And then every station, I went to three radio stations. We all got fired. They changed formats. L.A. is a crazy market for radio. Yeah. So... Well, you, you always get... We're going in another direction. direction. Yes. Well, and that's what they tell you when you don't book an audition, by right. the way. That's <laughs> yeah, right. we went in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So um, for radio, uh, the day that I got to do the Oscars, I pretty much realized that this was going to be my future. And it was confirmed a few months later when I got fired. <laughs> and that was my <laughs> last radio job. Ah. But it was right at the time when radio imaging was coming about and... and 
there were no women out there in the radio imaging world. So my husband was in the promotion end of the business, and he started putting me on radio stations as the voice of their imaging voice. And for those of you that don't do imaging, basically it's the voice that's not the DJ that connects all the records or whatever. It tells you we're going into a 50-minute music sweep or thank you for listening to the perfect music for at-work listening and things like that. So I started doing that, and that led into my television career. And mm -hmm. You still doing any of the, of the imaging work? Um, yeah, I've got, I've many, got some stations. Got? Mm, less than 10. At one point, I had about 40 stations. Wow. But it's a big responsibility. To those women that do major radio imaging, the Ann DeWiggs and Rachel McGrath's, like, I honor you because it's a lot. It's a lot when you... And they have way more stations than that. So they are... Yeah. The thing about radio imaging is that it's a little bit forgiving. You don't have to turn it around within an hour. Okay. Like if you're doing okay. TV or affiliate work. My radio stations, if they send it to me by noon, if I get it to them first thing in the morning, they're happy. Oh, okay. So it's not oh. even... an ur Unless they write, really urgent, sales department needs this, of course I'll jump on it. But otherwise... It's a comfortable turnaround time. What's the for stuff radio. you do that has the fastest turnaround in general? Um, well, night Nightline, night like line. today. Um, yeah, they give me news. a heads yeah, up. It's coming up tonight. That we're doing a, a show tonight, and yeah. I get a promo that we'll put in Kimmel, and within five minutes of him sending me the copy, he was like, "So, what do you think?" And I'm like, "Here it comes, boom!" <laughs> and uh, then he turned it around. He's like, "Hey, can you get the tag a little faster?" Boom, turned it around. He's like, "Perfect." And then I knew I was good to go. So you have a set window and that happens pretty much? Yeah, because Andy? Nightline is uh, East Coast, and if I'm in the in-show, it starts at 6. So that would have been problematic for us today. Right. Because I have to, they dial me up. They think they're dialing ISDN, but right. really they're dialing me on my IPDTL. Right, right. And, uh, and that's been pretty seamless now? That has been, been unbelievably seamless. This IPDTL thing is working. I've got the... The set numbers, so they they dial the same two two one three yeah. phone numbers that are yeah. very LA numbers, yeah. and they find me there. The only tricky part is if I don't know they're dialing, all of a sudden, like like make sure you never talk about your clients if you're on IVDL because <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't yeah. like at least with ISDN, you know, you you get that little chirp, sound, chirp. yeah, the blink blink, yeah. and but on IPDT, I was like, hey Randy, I'm like, whoa. whoa. Okay. <laughs> So some people yeah. just send music, I think, to yeah. let them know you're there. And the, but I'm not that yeah, sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how I work with them, and it's it's great. It's it's a really amazing show to be a part of. It's been around for so long, but Nightline really does mini documentaries every right. night. They give us such in-depth reporting since the Iran hostage crisis. Absolutely, to no, gobble. Yes. <laughs> Ted Koppel, right. Right. I remember when that first came on, that was 1979. Yeah, wow. So that's, that's a long-running show. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So, but it's taken on a, a you know, and now we have so many uh, reporters and hosts, and it's it's a great show to be a part of. Yeah. So are you still doing commercials? Yeah, and you're Obviously, you're auditioning all the time and doing what the rest of us are doing, trying to find commercial work. And... I audition like crazy, just like you guys do, yeah. I book some things, I don't book others, but I would say, you know, when we talk about knowing who you are and, and what you do in this industry, for me, it's promo, live announce, and narration, and I'm moving into trailers. It's the, the one that's been a little bit more difficult for women to find their footing, mm -hmm. but I find that that has completely changed. There are women now, the Roberta Solomons and Debbie Haradas and... Uh, people like that that are booking trailers, doing great work. And Melissa Disney, of course, who really is the first woman to break through with a major trailer. It's changing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm doing this uh, little get-together thing up in uh, Solvang. In yeah, September. well, I was going to say, what a great segue that we can talk <laughs> about, about VO Mastery. Well, let's first talk about, you've been doing VO Mastery for how many years now? This would be six years. Six years. But the first four were all events. So mm -hmm. I would sell 100 seats and bring a bunch of coaches through. and um, You're doing something a little different this time. Well, everyone seems to be doing that, right. you know, and there's a rather big one that happens more in November that I've always competed against. And... I don't want to compete with anyone. 
And plus, I found that when I did a 100-person uh, VO uh, event, by the end of the weekend, I would ask myself, how many people did I really connect with for more than two minutes? Mm -hmm. And the answer is like less than 10. So last year, I decided to um, rent my besties' uh, uh, villa up in Solvang. And cute little town. It's so cute. We <laughs> it, love Solvang. Yeah, it's 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 a, a Danish town that mm -hmm. they picked up and just moved from. But Denmark. the wineries there yeah. now, the restaurants, it's amazing. So um, 10 participants, and I'm bringing uh, like four coaches. I have Melissa Disney, David Alden, Scott Rummel, who oh. is not a coach, but yeah. just a major trailer artist who is leading the way in trailers. Um, and then uh, Brett Wynn from the refinery is coming. So, and I take 10 to 12 people and I put them in this villa where we're learning and connecting and taking things to a, a different level. Hmm. So uh, are you having running different classes? Or yeah. So we'll, it, yeah, it's like a flow through the evening. Like Melissa, we're going to open it with Melissa Friday night. We're going to have incredible food, the outside, the pool, the, um, you know, that outside bar and grill and it's just a beautiful villa. I mean, it's an amazing environment. We look out over the hill. Fergie's Winery is across the hill, um, literally walking to distance from town. And uh, because we have men and women, we're putting uh, men in a separate Airbnb and the women stay in the villa. Ah, great. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right thing to yeah, do. That'd, that'd be a lot of, and, of course, you have to go to the ostrich farm which is just down the street. Oh, I don't know the ostrich farm. Oh, you got to try the ostrich farm. Okay. They don't eat the ostrich, though, there, right? No, no. Well, Thank God. Not there, but they oh, are God, being raised no, for, they for do. other things. Well, a lot of us are vegan now. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, we, we were up there during the holidays this year, and you know, and Jacob insisted we stop at the ostrich farm. And? And we had a great time there. It was a lot of fun. Are they nice? I'm afraid they would, like, snap. They, 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 they keep their distance. They do. Unless you're feeding them, ah. which is kind of interesting. Open hand, and then a little right? farther down the road is Buellton, where Anderson's is, where you have to get the pea soup. The, the pea soup. Uh, yes, so that's I, a legendary place in California. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not legendary pea soup, though. <laughs> that's <laughs> it is though, isn't it? Legendary. Well, it is legendary until you actually try it and go, "Why they make a lot of this stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> when you make it by the hundred gallon, maybe vats, it's hard to keep giant the same. vats of it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you still have a couple of seats left for this. Uh, I think as of today, we have two seats available. And how can someone contact you to partake? Oh, well, thank you. I, I do hope someone would be interested. Our email is vomastery2019 at gmail.com and vomastery2019 at gmail.com. And uh, we'll give you the 411 on how everything works. It's September 6th, 7th, and 8th. And... Uh, I'm really looking forward to this incredible group of people that we have already signed up. Fine, fine artists that are really working at a high level that just can't wait to get into this environment where we're all going to take the game to the next level. Right. And, of course, those are the guys that have to bring the road rigs with them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and build their little voiceover shrine in their room Absolutely. just in case they have to, uh, Absolutely. to do something on this. Yeah, spot. we are going to do some recording of VO, so I'm going to set that up. That'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. So thank you for asking about that. No problem. All right. Our guest is Randy Thomas. Again, if you've got a question for Randy about trailers or promo or the Oscars or the Tonys or all these other things that she does, put them in the chat room. We'll be glad to ask her those. And we'll be right back with Randy right after these incredibly important messages. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. I'm giving hat like shot Watch recommendations. Or else. <laughs> I'm giving Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Diggies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. 
Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. For the last decade or so, the name VO to GoGo has become synonymous with up-to-the-moment expert award-winning training in voiceover performance, business building, and mindset. But it's also been a name that requires some explanations, sometimes a repeat calling out the numeral two. Well, it's time for a change. It's time for a simpler, more direct, and easy-to-spell name for their company and their training. One that embodies the mission they have to train voiceover talent in the art, the commerce, the science, and the mindset of voiceover. To help make VO 2 go go clients superheroes to their clients. Within the next few weeks, they'll say goodbye to VO2GoGo.com and they'll say hello to something new and deep and intelligent and fun. The new name will represent all the familiar knowledge and content David and his team have been giving you for the last 12 years, plus a whole lot more. And it'll be a lot easier to spell and to type into your browser. Stay tuned. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a he pain in the you-know-what. No success stories out of the lab. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Randy Thomas is our guest. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. George, you were you were interested in something you wanted to ask her. Well, I mean, so much. Uh, it seems like a lot of the voiceover work now is shifting from where you're getting direction live over ISDN, mm -hmm. Source Connect, IPTO, mm -hmm. and everything. Do you see that shifting for you for the kind of stuff you do, or are you still getting a lot of live direction? So for me, when I'm doing live... Live, live. Live, live. Right, live I announce. don't get directed. Right. My live announce is something that I have found my voice. Yeah. And so I always want to check with producers, like, is this exactly what you want? And I somehow find, like, a slightly different voice for everything I do. Hmm. The Kennedy Center sounds a little different than the Tonys. Hmm. Um, and the Oscars sounds different than everything. For some reason, I can compartmentalize where mm -hmm. I am, what show I'm doing, sure. and then which voice, how much of a smile, how deep and pushed is it, or is it more warm and friendly? Right. So I do self-direct a lot on that. Um, okay. Most of the stuff I do, the uh, pre-records for those shows all are directed okay. because it's a completely different thing and they're looking for a different feel. Oh. It's more of a narration or mm -hmm. whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what equipment do you have in your studio? Yeah. Pretty much that you because know what of it is. <laughs> George, I, I basically have let go of my Avalon and my um, my Manly and the Vox Box. I, I'm it's down to one. my 416, my Apollo twin, and my Mac. Yeah. My work here is done. Right? I mean, that's all I have. I still have a big rig, but I yeah. I don't it plug cool. it in. It looks cool. But I can't even plug it in and cool. so that we see the pretty lights because I'm in this booth that I luckily was able to get from D. Bradley Baker that Man, Bradley. I don't have enough. 
tower, I think, in the garage yeah. to have all my pretty lights. And I'm trying to keep it cool. That would make it hot. As you know, yeah. with 100 degrees yeah, you don't need that. temperatures, it's been a challenge. And yeah. and Dan came over and, and, and uh, saved my butt the other day. <laughs> Good. It Help me recycle the air. There. Yeah. It was really <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. So, you ready to take a couple questions from our massive Let's do audience it. around the world? I love what it. What do we got? All right. First one's from Paul Stefano. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is an event that you have not, not announced? announced that you would really, <laughs> really like, like to, to announce? Wow. <laughs> um, I don't know. Something. Intergalactic, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. First communications with uh, another realm. I'm not sure. I mean, um, I was very blessed that I got in. I, I was the first woman in history to do the Democratic National Convention. And then when Obama took the office, when he accepted the nomination in Denver, they brought me in just for that. That was pretty thrilling. Yeah. Um, you know. How about esports? Esports, oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. And yes. I'm not the right demographic. They don't want me announcing anything for them. They want they'll take my daughter, they'll take your right. daughter, they'll take Grace over there in the couch. They don't want anyone my age doing anything. <laughs> this one came in from uh Camille uh, Camille J. Simon. Uh some of the questions she asked you you really kind of covered, right. but I think one that um what percentage of your work is done at home now? I would say 90%. The only yeah. things I don't do from home are the um, the big shows, Oscars, Tonys, Kennedy Center, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I can do all the pre-records from home. Oscars is the one exception. We do it all uh, there, um, usually at um, sound design to get everything perfect because we're – we're recording packages, you know, the, that eventually they replace my voice and put the presenter's voice on those packages. Right. So everything has to be really pristine and perfect for the pre-record. But the live is the live. It's it's what it is. Yeah. But as far as auditions, Nightline, everything I do, it, it's it's all from home. It's why we call our job a golden handcuffs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so you're not really you're not you you haven't been called out to any major studios in town at all to do. No, I don't do that. You know yeah. the I love hearing Tara Strong and Debbie Derryberry and these are animation people. They all get to go to a studio and record together. Like that just sounds like the greatest thing ever. You know, we live very solitary lives. I walk into a studio, I do my thing, I leave. Sometimes I go to a voice actor's home. I won't name any names, but sometimes the ones that aren't really in L.A., maybe a little further away. Right. I'll, sometimes I'll up. never get to leave. <laughs> They're like, I have a person, like, a human here. Like, He's not leaving. Don't get enough story adult conversation. Story story, yeah. It's true. We're very lonely. Like, especially the empty nesters. <laughs> the ones that still have kids at home, at least they have something to do. But That's the ones true. that are like empty nesters are like... They're like, don't leave, George. <laughs> I need human contact. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's half the fun of what we do, and getting you know getting to meet people in, in various places. True and, that. And uh, you know, and getting to share what their lives are all about and what your life is all about. But that is why connecting is so great. And and I do find that the people in the voiceover industry, uh, the actors, they do, they like their connections. They oh, absolutely. like you know, and and we all have a, a shared you know, loneliness and a shared pride of what we do. So yeah. it is. It's great to, mm -hmm. uh, so let me see, Laura Lawton, you have her up next. So what's? Yeah, Dan, you want to read this one? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, uh, Laura asks, what's your best advice for someone who wants to get started in live? live start where you can. If you have kids, start with your kid's school and volunteer to do the voiceover for the auctions or, the whatever market. events right. or the their, yeah, the whatever it is, <laughs> do it. The football games, whatever it is that's a live situation, try to put yourself in it. Um, get in touch. Well, you have to train, obviously. Do some training with people that will train you in live announce. And then there's a whole bunch of ways to find it locally, find it regionally. Um, if you live in a town where you have a lot of hotels and convention spaces, they're always looking for announcers. They generally bring in productions that provide their own announcers, but there's always a chance that they might need an announcer. So I would have an announced demo, and I would make sure that everyone that needs it has it. Mm -hmm. So, Excellent. Um, Maurice A. Scott. Oh, hi, Maurice. 
How do you handle voice acting and traveling? Nervously. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. it, it got to the point where I couldn't travel during the week. So if I would fly, I'd fly on a Sunday yeah. so that I could get where I need to be, set up my booth in the hotel room right. and be ready for whatever work would come my way Monday through or whatever days I'm, yeah. I'm there. So it's very tricky, especially if you have to go east. You lose an entire day from L.A. going to New York. It's You're really gambling that someone's going to need you and they won't be able to get you. And, and let's face it, in yeah. the world of VO, most of us got some of the jobs we have because someone else wasn't available. Right. They, sure. they tried us, they <laughs> liked us, and that other person right kind of lucked out. Right place, right time, and you got to deliver. So that's yeah. why we're all like really paranoid about not having what we mm. need in order to do the job that we have to do. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I travel nervously <laughs> for that reason. But... There's yeah. studios, uh, you know, I do mostly major markets anyway. So I'm in New York or right. if we're doing Brooklyn or Cleveland for rock and roll or Washington, I could find a studio if I absolutely have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Scott, do you, want, or do you want to get that Fred North? Channel? Yeah. Fred North rhymes with orange. <laughs> uh, you mentioned you started in Detroit, but didn't mm -hmm. mention the station. I uh, he grew up in CKLW, anybody of who course. knows that, that part of the world, mm -hmm. WRAF, WWWW, and WABX. Where were you? Wait, you left and Keener off, WKNR, Pat oh. St. John, those guys. Um, yeah, I am started on W4, my very first radio station, and the deal was you had to know how to say WWWW Detroit. Like today, people go WWW, w, 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 right? Yeah. They yeah. don't. No one says W the way you're supposed to. Yeah. But that was the litmus test to get on W4. <laughs> um, WABX, I was on there for a short time. WRIF, I was on there. And then I left. So I only was in Detroit for a short time, even though that's where I was from. All right. All right. Judy Fossum Mathern. Uh, do you provide coaching for live announcing via Skype, Zoom, mm. and that kind of thing? And if not, would you recommend or who would you recommend? Hi, Judy. Yes, I do coaching. So I do. Uh, I coach via Zoom. I was going to say Skype, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. 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 And um, I, that's the one I like. I prefer Zoom. We've been using it for what? How many years, George? At least five years. Yeah. At yeah. Least. No, I love it. So I do coach via Zoom. I Go by the hour. If you buy three hours, you get a better rate than if you just buy the one. But even if you buy the one, especially when I start working with people who are somewhat working pros, like we can do a lesson and then I can bank a couple of, you know, some of the time for when you get an audition and you really need someone to listen. I, I find that that works well for a lot of people. So the answer is yes, and it's randythomasvo.com. I do a similar thing. Sometimes people will book an hour of consulting right and we'll get to a half an hour and just like okay you you're well, fine or you need to go do these seven things right and come back to me and we'll do the other half hour right. because yeah. if you know george's rates you really you need to you need save to but but in the long run you do save people money because you yeah. you do the the right thing the, get it right the first the time. way you eq'd yes. my I didn't even know I could EQ my Apollo. Like, I didn't even know oh. what that interface was because I could never EQ my Scarlet. I don't no, know. No, no, you can't. Right. This, so this, yeah, this I went tunable. from Scarlet to Apollo. Right. So, yeah, I think that's brilliant. And, you know, Dave Walsh, I'll work with Dave Walsh when I need something. And we mm -hmm. had a session and I had time. I'm like, can I just bank this? <laughs> like, when mm -hmm. I have a really super important, he's like, of course, of course. Yeah. Great coach. Dave's a, a fabulous coach. Mm -hmm. sure. We've had him on here before. Uh, Jonathan Arara asks, Hi, Randy. Do you have a background in singing and music? No, not at all. People pay me not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really a bad singer. I have been told that I'm tone deaf, which is very unusual for being a voiceover artist. I, <laughs> right. I literally, I can hear a song, I think I'm in key, and I'm not. So <laughs> it's weird. But, but then you know again, music, but Barbara Streisand cannot speak like I speak. So that's the trade-off. And that I've told her that. <laughs> in person and what was her reaction to that? <laughs> she was horrified okay, okay. <laughs> Elise, Elise Rossi uh, it says I still have another uh, still have your book Voice for Hire am I missing another one you've written or mm. will you write another you know I do hope to write another book one of these days thank you I'm glad you have the book I hope it answered some questions for you and if you ever have questions reach out on my website let me know yeah books are a massive commitment 
Yeah. Well, you know, I just did a TED Talk in Fargo. Oh, you did? Really? I in did Fargo. my TEDx no talk. Was in... it a TEDx? So it was a TEDx about a certain. <clears throat> it TEDx about was a certain thing, like a certain. <clears throat> right. Term. Well, it actually just celebrated ten years. But TEDx is m- meaning it's more like affiliates. It's yeah. little, but even though an X is considered little in yeah. Fargo, it's the largest in the country. I spoke in really? front of twenty one hundred people. Wow. Holy Scariest cow. thing I've ever done in my entire life. Whoa. Like, if you tell me we're going live on the Oscars to half a billion people, I'm like, I'm good. Right. I have a script. I have my headphones. I have... But zone. you put me on a stage, no copy. I have no prompter. I have no cards in my hand. I just had to remember the story that I was supposed to tell exactly as I should have told it. And, and at a certain time. In, within Yeah, they wanted 10 minutes as your max. And I Whoa. came in. Nine minutes and 58 seconds. <laughs> I don't know. Bad. It's that innate body clock. And I had a one minute um, video of my, you oh, you know, of my, my work that I did. Yeah, 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 I created a one minute reel. Thank you, Michael Klein, for doing that. And I created a reel and between the one minute and my talk was nine. So it's going to be out at the end of September. I'm oh, okay. kind of excited, Great. but yeah, a little awesome. nervous. And <laughs> I just hope that um, that the talk that I gave that people relate to it, especially women, because that's really who I'm speaking to okay. in my story. And those are live. I mean, when they when they release it's them, it's as live as it gets. They never. Edit oh yeah, anything. when they go, yeah, yeah, then that's they're it. forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forever. know. Yeah. We have quite the active audience tonight. Yeah. A question from Ali Hurley: uh, What recording program do you use? Twisted Wave. It's really it simple. It's the yeah. only recording program I need. Uh, you know, when I first got into voiceover, I learned on Pro Tools because that's what the pros were using. But then, I don't know if it was George or people like Bo or or Dan, Mm. Twisted Wave, best program out there, easiest thing. I just taught Grace how to edit on there because she wants to learn how to do this stuff. And easy peasy. Bo Bo was the first one that told me about it. Yeah. I don't know how long now. I have some tutorial on on my website that's from 20... Uh, 10 oh, that wow. I did. So it's been at least that long. Right. And he yeah. put it, he's the first to put it on his iPad too. Yeah. He's always, so. he likes to be the bleeding edge for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Um, in terms of, if I don't know if you have any good recommendations from, for Diane R. She says, what are some key factors to consider when selecting a voice training company or service? Yeah. Great or question. So I would say, this is just me talking. When you start training with whoever it is, please don't make a deal to do the demo with them. Yeah. I just think, yeah. t- just say, I want to train with you. And if it works out well, let them court you into doing your demo. Let them learn who you are. You learn about them. And you decide, is this the right person that when I'm paying a lot of money to create a demo that they're going to be able to get me in that read and I'm going to be able to give the best possible read. So I say separate the companies that insist on doing your demo. You may choose them later anyway, but I don't like these come on in and then we're going to right. do your demo when they have this whole plan. Regimented out. Like yeah, a like train with... Follow our step, it's like no. Pink by numbers. No, right. it's not. Well, and no, it's you not. should train with different people before you even make a demo. Make sure that you've got enough variety and the ability mm-hmm. to maneuver from one director to another, as you will have to in your career, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Last and, one. Yeah, from Trey. So. Finish line. We're crossing the finish line. Trey, our buddy Trey, Kendrick Mosley says, uh, hey, Randy, speaking of radio, did you ever work uh, Ever work Greg Budell and Budell. Cox? Yes. So Greg radio. Budell and I worked together on Waxy in Fort Lauderdale. He was a great morning guy, uh, and he went on, uh, I believe his whole career now is talk shows, right? I believe he's a talk show host. Okay. But funny, funny guy. He was literally like a brother to me. Um, Just, I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but a very sad thing. In 1980, we were both on the air. He did mornings. I did midday on Waxy. My brother died June 1st of 1980. He was found drowned. Wow. Mm. By October... Greg's brother had died. Mm, So the two of us were on this radio station and we had, it was so sad. And and we both went and got help together and it was really kind of a beautiful thing. But it was sadness that brought us together and bonded us. I would think that was a little bit unusual in that 
at that age, at that time, yeah. in 1880, that people would, yeah. in works, in a workplace, come together that way. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. And, you know, um, so he's a great guy, and we, we've kind of lost touch over the years. Mm-hmm. But anytime I hear the name Greg Udell, I think of how funny. <laughs> <laughs> great. Cool. One last question. I think I'm going to ask every guest this now okay. and, and when, when, when we're done. <clears throat> and that is, what is it, if there was one thing that you thought you'd think you should have known or mm. would have liked to have known <laughs> when you started off in voiceover that would have helped you a whole lot. This is going to sound like the craziest answer. That's okay. That's a crazy show. Because obviously everyone knows you need training, you need this, you need that. Had I realized at the beginning of my career that when I was in school, I should have paid more attention to learning to type. Mm-hmm. I should have taken computer classes just from the standpoint of knowing how to make your own marketing pieces and things yeah. like that. And um, taken some business courses to have been better as an investor. You know, luckily I'm married a really long time and my husband's been involved with, um, you know, the money side of, of our relationship. But I wish that I had paid more attention because I think when you're going into a business, if you go, you know what, one day I'm going to be really, really successful. I'm going to make lots of money. So I want to know what to do with it and how to handle it. I think if everyone went into a business believing that, then maybe that would be their eventual thing. I, you know, I wasn't smart enough to think about those things. So thank you for asking that's, because that's, that's, a, that's my that's advice. Everybody needs to listen That's a to great that. answer because we're everybody. entrepreneurs. This is not about being a star. Well, like no, someone like you who, no. who is a bit of a voiceover star, but we're, it's about getting work. And being an, an entrepreneur and a private business person, and that's You're running excellent, a business. Ex- yeah. excellent stuff to know. Yeah. All righty. Mm. Randy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Always a pleasure Aww. to see you. Thanks, Randy. Thanks for coming Thank in. you both. I love it here, and um, I really appreciate the time, and thank you guys for submitting all your questions. Yeah. And once again, the, the email for, uh, for VO Mastery? Oh, VO Mastery 2019 at Gmail. All right. All right. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after this. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. (laughs) Snails like it too. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All righty. Well, you're probably wondering why Ari is here with me. Because Harlan Hogan, our wonderful sponsor at VoiceOver Essentials, would like to remind us that he's having his dog days of summer sale. (laughs) So we're using Ari here as a little bit of a prop to tell you about his dog days of summer prop. Cutest prop. I know. He's he's nice and cuddly. And anyway, but here's what's going to go on over at VoiceOver Essentials. If you buy anything over there, and that means, you know, the Harlan Hogan VO1A mic or the Harlan Hogan Signature Series uh, microphone or some of the other great stuff that he offers, the Portabooth Plus and the Portabooth Pro. If you buy any one of those items uh, during the dog days of summer promotion, you will get a free ABS. Now, what is an ABS? It doesn't stand for automatic braking service. Or system, it stands for the uh, adjustable boom, boom stand. strap, 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 stop, stop, whatever. That's <laughs> stand the adjustable strap, stop. boom stand. It's great <laughs> if you've got a boom microphone, which you should if you're hanging your microphone properly. Sometimes it can get a little bit heavy, and you want to be able to make sure that your boom stand doesn't fall over. So during the dog days of summer sale, 
if you buy anything, you get the adjustable boom stop. And that will allow you to save your expensive microphone and, of course, having it fall on your foot, which can also be a problem. But go over to VoiceOver Essentials right now during their dog days of summer sale. Buy anything there and get a free ABS strap free. And free delivery, of course, over at VoiceOver Essentials. Best way to go over there is to go to the bottom of our homepage where you'll see the icon of Harlan talking into his venerable Portabooth Pro and click on that. It will take you right there and you'll be able to look at all the great stuff he has. Buy it all, get a free ABS. Thanks, Harlan. Hey, everybody. This is our segment where we get to mention source elements, creators with Source Connect. Won't take a lot of your time, but I just want to remind you that. As a voice actor, you need to have the best tools and the tools that allow you to connect to the, all the studios in the world. And they pretty much at this point all have Source Connect. This is the tool that allows your audio in your studio to be connected to theirs, high quality, real time, very low latency, and a reliable connection. And this is really the tool for the pros. And you can get a trial right now, go to source-elements.com and get a 15 day free trial. You don't have to have a little iLock dongly thing to do it either. For Source Connect standard, it will just register to your computer. So go get it running, get it up and running, get familiar with it, test it out, see what it does, understand it. And that day the job comes, you'll be ready to go. Head over to source-elements.com, get a 15 day free trial of Source Connect standard and tell them we sent you. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. We're back. Yes, we are. It's great having Randy on the show tonight. She's always fun to have around and, uh, and lots of cool stuff to talk about. I don't have a dog, but I do have an Ella. Uh, say hi, hi, Ella. Hi. Hi, Ella. <laughs> Ella's visiting for the summer. Yes. Uh, next week on this show, we have Tech Talk number 14. Oh, yeah. Yes which we'll record shortly. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you've got tech questions, make sure you send them in. Right now would be a really good time. We'd love to hear from you if you've got something question about your home voiceover studio. Uh, who are our donors of the week? We got donors. We got donors. They went off the edge of my screen. Here we go. Uh, we got donors from donations from Graham Spicer, uh, Joseph Harrison, Christy Burns, and Dwayne DeSalvo. Those are some of our most recent donors all and right those are those can be one-offs or you can subscribe if you like you can make a little monthly contribution through the website we appreciate it it's a big help mm -hmm. uh, also join our mailing list uh that way you know exactly who's going to be on tonight or whatever we're up mm -hmm. to 604 people on there we'd like all to get right. it up to a thousand so everybody sign up for the mailing list uh show us your booths you know, we love the hollywood sign but we'd like to see what goes on in your studio what have you yeah. built in your booth uh, show us how creative you are. Show us your voiceover shrine. And since it's summer, you can even send in like your, your favorite hotel room setup. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but remember, always in landscape, not portrait. Right. All righty. Uh, if you need help with your home studio, you can go to georgethetech.com. That's my website. And Dan, you're also available in your place over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm -hmm. Make sure you go check that out. Well, we're here every other Monday. If you'd like to be here in the studio live, uh, you can write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. The air conditioning's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's cool, cool in here. here yeah. yeah, nice and cool. I don't even have it set on high. Uh, and let us know when you can be here, and we'll let you know if we're doing a show that night. Uh, and uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Source Elements. Uh, VO2GoGo.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, of mm -hmm. course, the uh, uh, J. Michael Collins demos. That's right. And you mentioned VoiceOver Extra because that was off the edge of the screen. I oh. didn't see it. And VoiceOver Extra. That's right. Thanks to John Florian for that. Mm -hmm. Also, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, our director tonight was Hat. Hat Merlino. Hat Merlino. All right. What a guy. His mom well should done, be here so. soon. All right. And but. Hat's brother, Mike, was in the, uh, <laughs> the chat, chat room. room monitoring tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. And, uh, oh, and we got to thank Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. Show up here soon, Lee. We want to see you. Anyway, that's going to do it for us tonight. And, uh, again, if you need help with your home studio or you need, you want to see the best talent in the voiceover business, join us here on VoiceOver Body Shop uh, all week here on Facebook or on YouTube on all the places you can find us. 
And that will do it for now. Tech Talk is coming up, so stay tuned for that. Send in your tech questions. In the meantime, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Close enough. We'll see you next time.